Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well out there. Welcome to this new series I call Inside the Mix. It's a chance for me to jump into a mix and show you what I've been working on. For this first episode, I'm really excited to be doing a remix for one of my favorite ambient songwriters. His name is Bill Wenzel and he goes by Chords of Orion. You could find his work on all the major streaming services and he's got an awesome YouTube channel. He's a really talented guitarist and he just spreads a lot of good vibes and great energy online. So for this song, it's called The Elements Shall Melt With Fervent Heat. And Bill was kind enough to share the stems for this song. So we're going to do a remix. Let's jump into Studio One and get started. All right, so now we're in Studio One. Let's take a look at the primary tracks uh, for this project and I'll talk through them before we start to talk about what I did to them. So we have Guitar One, which was the original um, track that Bill recorded and this is what it sounds like. So th that should give you sort of a sense for what the guitar is going to sound like on its own. Now, what Bill did with the second guitar right here is he actually ran it through um, basically a duplicate, but there's an octave on it. So it's up one octave. I'll be able to give you a little bit more details. Let's take a look at the song notes. So the second guitar is a duplicate of audio one with a pitch shift and octave and Bill ran some automation in the final project. He ran automation on it. Uh, so the mix level for the pitch shift increases as the track goes on. Now, this idea of automation, I continue with in this project. Actually, there's a lot of automation that's going on here. Almost every single track and some of the buses are automated. Um, I automate them just manually using my mouse and sometimes for the automation process I'll either just um, do it in real time or in Studio One it has um, a touch option for the automation so that it's reading whatever automation that I did on the first pass and then it only records the changes to that automation on the second pass or, and sometimes I do a third pass for the automation and as I play this track Keep an eye on the levels and you'll see them auto adjust. So you'll get a sense for the automation that I'm doing. And as far as automation goes, here's just a sense for what that looks like for like the volume. Um, but depending on even what effects are used, there's going to be a whole bunch of automation happening as well. Anyways, back to what I was talking about. The second guitar is the same as the first, except what I wanted to do was keep the first guitar more or less um, centered, mono-like, but not entirely mono. And the second guitar, which includes the octave, I wanted it to be extremely spread out. So I wanted it to hit the far, far ends of the channels. And I used, um, you'll see actually, the um, not just the Valhalla delay, which obviously uh, I used. Bill used this as well. These are the settings for that. But I use the Fab Filter Pro R. Uh, a lot of people don't like the Pro R, or they it doesn't really uh, speak to them, I guess. But I really like to use this in certain circumstances. Uh, this being one of them. I used uh, 10 seconds of reverb and I cut out the low end so that it's mostly high end and it goes to the far sides of the track. So let's hear what the second track sounds like on its own. And because of the Valhalla delay, every 10 seconds it regenerates itself.
here we go. And as the track goes on towards the end, you'll really start to hear what I did with this crystallizer. This is the crystallizer by Sound Toys. It's very similar to the Eventide um, H3000. So, pitch shift and granular reverse echo. You'll hear it over towards the end. Now you really start to hear and you'll take a, take a look at this, the mix knob, because I'm automating this effect. So I kind of play it the same way that like, uh, if you're familiar with um, Brian Eno and Harold Budd, what they did with, you know, like the ambient stuff, Plateau of Mirror and whatnot, you've got this great performance by Harold Budd. You've got Brian Eno really just controlling the effects. That's kind of, an idea that I that I had for this this track. I thought that would be a great way to approach it. All right, so that's and you can actually hear this. This is just all the same reverb and delay. Let's hear the the guitar one and two, and then um, the original guitar which I used untouched just to add some of that, that grit. The original guitar track had a lot of grit. This is what it sounds like towards the end. And you'll see on the guitar bus, I actually rolled off quite a bit of, um, of the low end because with a lot of the, the effects that are going on, the effects are really adding in the high end, and I didn't want that much low end to be competing with what's happening in the high end. Uh, we've got plenty of low end that's happening with the drums and with the, uh, the synth. the guitars. Um, Bill primarily being a guitar player and recording guitar parts, I really wanted to focus on the guitars and how I processed them, but I, I didn't want to do too much to the guitars. He had a great performance here and I didn't want to ruin that. Uh, so what I initially started focusing on, and this is a weird way to talk about it non-linear, I should have maybe talked about this at the start was I wanted to focus on the drums and I know Bill was using a loop from um, Logic. I literally just used my MIDI keyboard and Superior Drums using the um, Big Rock Drums pack and just a basic Gretsch kit. You know, just finger drumming to add a little bit of live and sort of mix up the drums a little bit. I didn't want to do too much on the drums. And, and again, I really wanted to just add some low end to the drums. There's plenty of high end happening with the guitars. I wanted the low end to be handled by the drums and the, the ARP. So let's listen to the, just the drums. much going on but you can see that I actually ran the drums um, as a multi out because I knew that I was going to want to process them a little bit differently I was going to want the snare to be rather fat um, and I which I used a Pultec for and a Studer both by Universal Audio Let's see if I can pull up the Pultec so you can see my settings for the Pultec See, I've attenuated quite a bit on the high end, and then my settings for the Studer, also by Universal Audio. 
really just trying to get a lot of low end out of the drums. And for the kick, I really wanted it to be almost like, you know, a heartbeat sort of kick. So I took out quite a bit of the low end. You'll see I started with a pull tech. These are those settings. And then I went with a fab filter to really just keep the low end and then taper off the mids and the highs. I did not want to compress the drums on their own bus. You'll see everything is running into a drum bus. It's not touched. But that drum bus and actually everything else runs into a mix bus. And this mix bus is an API 2500 by UAD. And I don't want a lot of compression at all. At all. This being an ambient track, the same way I would process something that's classical, same way I would process something that's jazz oriented or mostly acoustic, I wouldn't want much compression on here. I want the performance to just be as dynamic as it was going to be. All right, so we've talked about the guitars, we've talked about the drums. Let's talk about how this track actually starts. It starts with the three um, guitar pieces, the, the guitars. And what I did was I took the trail end, the way that they trail out with all of the reverbs still regenerating and, and fading out. I took that and I just did my own uh, reverse reverb delay. So what I did was I took those tracks, I reversed them uh, in Studio One. I believe the hotkey for that, I think I wrote it down. Um, let's see. Control R, I think it is. Yeah. And then here, here's the rest of the the notes here, I added a delay, um, and, and the compressor, I bounced it, and then I, <laughs> you, you add the effect, and then you reverse it, so you, you, you reverse it, you add whatever effects you want, and then you reverse it again, so that when you're playing it forward, you're hearing all of the reverse delays that were happening. So that's how this song actually starts. Let's take a listen to that. And you hear this quite a bit. So in the song, obviously, since I have this soloed, you can see that the drums already would be starting, the guitars already start, and this just sort of fades out on its own. So that's one of the main tracks that you're listening to when the track starts. Also, um, I was using Spitfire Labs, who make amazing libraries for um, orchestral instruments, and they have a Labs um, set of libraries, which is really, really cool, and it's free. So I'd recommend that for anybody who's really interested in just testing out what libraries are available. Spitfire Labs is some of the best. They just do amazing work. So for this, I used um, their library called Organic Textures. This is the Thunder and Bird song. I think I have that up. Yep, Organic Textures. Here it is. It's a free download if you're interested in that. 
this is what it sounds like. This is just uh, birds, mostly. Now let's hear that with that intro loop. This being sort of a post-apocalyptic sort of feel, I was really inspired by, I believe his name is Takashi Kokubo. There's a, a great ambient album called Oasis of the Wind. Uh, two. I believe there's a couple of them out. And one of the really cool things that uh, happens on that album is just this overwhelming sense of nature. So this being sort of post-apocalyptic, I thought it would be really cool to at least start the track that way. And as it turns out, yeah, I just... Every uh, sort of quiet piece in this song that I could, including this middle breakdown area, I include these birds. So we've now went over the guitars, we went over the drums, we went over some of the opening loops and the, uh, the birds from Spitfire Labs. The one other thing that I wanna go over is, um, well, there's two other things. The first is the, the synth. The, I believe Bill used the ARP 2500. In the stem, it sort of had, um, seemed maybe like effects that were printed on it. So I just, I just ran with it. This is what that sounds like. Here's our ARP synth. You can see I, I automated the volume. This just goes the length of the track. It's just always sort of there as this droning piece. Sometimes you're, it's more um, apparent in the composition and in the recording as others, and other times it's not. You'll notice during this part, it, the volume should come down on its own. We're looking over here. Yep, just cuts out, and that's intentional. And the other piece, which is intended to be extremely light, you can listen to this song or this mix 20, 30, 40 times, and maybe by then you'll notice there's something happening synth-wise. And I'm just using Omnisphere for this. <laughs> nope, that's not it. I'll get that back up and running, but that is intended to just be extremely light and in the background to the point that you wouldn't even hear it. We'll even just mute it for now. So that's pretty much it for this, this, um, this mix. 
I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, let me know if you have any questions, but um, let's move on to the mastering part of this. Um, you'll notice that I've got everything going through my mix bus, the API 2500, and then that mix bus feeds into my main. And again, I wasn't gonna do anything heavy in terms of a limiter on this. So for this type of material, I would just use the Universal Audio Precision Limiter. I really like what it does for material that I'm I'm not looking for much of a sound on it, just like if it's transparent program type material. Uh, I want it to just be there just in case I get these odd sort of spikes in volume. The UAD Precision could take care of that. That's the only reason I have it on. I could probably take it out and I'd be fine. But um, I keep it in and really important as well is I keep this mix right around negative six decibels and I render it as a wave. Um, the negative six decibels is going to come in handy when we move onto the outboard gear um, equalizer and, and limiter in the mastering section with mix analog. So yeah, I didn't want any chance at um, peaking or anything like that. Try to give myself as much headroom as possible for the limiting process and the math, the final master. So let's move on to that part. All right, so now we've mixed our song and it's time to go master it. Lately, I've been preferring the analog sound over my mastering plugins. So we're gonna jump into Mix Analog, which is a cloud-based mastering service. And um, I'll give you a sneak peek of what that looks like. All right, so we're taking a look at this mastering rack, which I'm familiar with. So let's just use this. We're going to book a 30 minute slot, but we've got 28 minutes left. So let's go with that. All right. And we're most likely going to be jumping to the middle of the track. We want the loudest part. What I love about this is we can use, uh, I believe they use some Burl audio converters, um, A to D converters. Definitely going to want to push that a little bit.
back. without actually spending more time on mix analog. I'm not entirely sure whether this mid side processing is indicated in the top slot or the bottom slot. So it's totally possible that the changes I'm making are on the mid side when I'm hoping that they're actually on the stereo channel and, or sorry, on the sides. So we're gonna just stick with what we have. We're gonna bounce it. And I, for my mind, <laughs> this sounds a whole lot better being pushed and clipped compared to just a plug-in. So anyway, let's bounce. Five minutes later. All right, with the mixing and the mastering done, the song is complete.
Well, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed going inside the mix. I want to thank Bill Wenzel, Chords of Orion, for making these stems available for me to remix. Keep up the awesome music and keep up the awesome channel. And if you'd like to get featured and have me mix your song, get in touch. Until next time, take care.